Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. It's January 3rd. It is a gloomy afternoon here in Napa, California, and I sound super congested because my allergies are just continuing to kick my ass. I am starting to wonder if there is an allergen that I am not aware of that is making my allergies kick my ass because I've never been this prolonged before. So apologies in advance for how extra nasally I feel, but I am so glad to be here. I can see a bunch of you in the chat. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Just let me know because I miss you. I missed you. I had a great time on my time off, but I did miss you guys. So I'm so glad you guys are here. Happy New Year. If you are here on the replay, I am glad you're here as well. I have no idea whose phone that was. Was that yours or mine, Jesse? It's probably Jesse. Um, anyway, yeah, we're all kids are doing something in the back. Jesse's now over there. He's much easier to be seen because of my office redo. And when I'm done with it, I will be sure to, uh, do a tour, an updated tour of it. But until then, it's time to get my bullet journal set up for January. So that's that's what's going on. Alrighty. So let's 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 switch over, shall we? I just thought I'd say hi first. Yeah, it worked. Everything is working okay. So here is the uh my January, and I just wanted to give you a second to see how the tasks page looked getting filled in. I guess the only real thing that sort of isn't working the way I wanted it to, well, not the way I wanted it to, but the only thing that's like obnoxious, at least slightly, is having this line go through where I'm writing, but whatever, I can still read it, right? And I'm starting to fill in trackers. Now, I'm not counting a lot of the things like, so... Let's just say that um, the way it looks when I look at like when people say what is week one of 2021, it is not the week we're wrapping up. It's starting tomorrow. So for my four weeks I've put into my trackers, uh, week one is starting tomorrow. This is me sleep feet tracking so far. And with resting, I'm basically just like laying down. And some of this was this yesterday wasn't even because I wasn't feeling good. It was because I was watching Bridgerton. So I don't know if that counts or not. But like if I put a line in my sleep tracker, that's when I got up to either go to the bathroom or when my family, because they stay up a lot later than I do, are talking really loud and it wakes me up. And so I'm trying to decide if I need to wear earplugs or not to bed. But last night was pretty bad. So there's that. But I have started the sleep tracking, started the sleep research and started thinking about book club ideas. So I am on top of those situations. And I did set up a bullet journal for last week. I wasn't going to, but I really wanted to A, kind of experiment with it without the pressure of the camera, and B, I actually had a lot of shit I was trying to take care of last week. Uh, when it came to, you know, getting the office redone, there was a few work-related things I did work on just to make sure that Monday is not a heinous shock to me, which I was fine doing. You know, Cat turned 17. So this was an experimental layout, and, um... I kind of like it, but I don't think that this is quite enough space for me, at least not on a super busy week. And at the same time, I didn't really need the extended task list because I, there were things here probably could have been on the task list, whatever, right? And I decided to try using a meal planner, which is not something I generally do in my bullet journal right now. Anyway, yeah. So best earplugs are from Harbor Freight Tools. Thank you, Monica. I'll check that out. I have some left over from when I was traveling because I found that I can't sleep in a hotel unless I wear earplugs. So I have not binged all of Bridgerton yet, by the way. I think I finished episode five, question mark, possibly four, whichever one, whichever one. I can't even talk. I'm going to spoil it. So let's just say I think it was five. I think I'm up to episode five. Um, anyway, so this was last week. And then I also added in some pages that I think I might need to put at the beginning of every monthly spread from here on out. Book notes. I read The Lazy Genius and I kind of cheated. You're going to see it here. I kind of cheated. I don't know if it counts as a cheat or not, but I already have two books marked off. Oh, hi, Mark, for my read 100 books. And one of them was a book that The Lazy Genius, which I had started reading 
in 2020, and then I finished on the first. And I had probably a good quarter of the book left. So technically, I think it still counts. I mean, it counts. I finished it then. And then the second one was actually this one, which was a pretty easy book to read, and I bought it, but I just hadn't gotten around to reading it. It's the Home Edit Life. And like, there's some, like, okay, I'm gonna be real with you guys here. I'm good at with both of these books, The Home Edit Life and The Lazy Genius Way. I both found parts of them extremely helpful and in like, I enjoyed parts of them. And there were parts of them where I was kind of like, this is weak sauce. So this is just, and I'll, I could talk more about them. I don't know if you want me to talk a lot about books right now, but like with The Home Edit Life, I saved pages that I wanted to go back to when I am doing things like I really love the idea of using like jars in the door of your fridge to store your fresh herbs because I can never do that in a way that keeps them from getting all janky so that's actually something I might want to try I found this book to be really beautiful to look at but low on substance there were some good tips but I figure I feel like the most of it just feels like a coffee table book to look at the decorating they did for hella rich people who have gigantic closets and a lot of stuff. So as somebody who does not have I have a lot of stuff, but I don't have gigantic closets and my stuff is nowhere near this aesthetic. A lot of the tips in here felt kind of uh, out of touch. So um, so that book, I. I both got some inspiration out of it, but I also wasn't. And with The Lazy Genius, it kind of was a similar thing, but not quite. The first half of the book, I had a lot of takeaways that I really got interested in, but it started to feel really repetitive towards the end. And even though I could tell that there was like a Christian focus in some of it, at the end of the book, it got really in your face for a book that does not advertise itself as a Christian book. So that kind of bothered me. Anyway... You see what I'm saying? So again, I'm just letting you know, this was, I don't say don't read either of these books. I'm just saying that they both came highly recommended to me and I found things in them that I really liked, but there were also parts of them where I was like, okay, this book could have been half as long. And that's kind of how I felt about both of them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Watch the TV show. I haven't watched a TV show. And then over here, I made a page to start planning out the videos that I'm doing in January. And then I actually started doing some counting ahead of time for the ideas that I had for this week's layout because counting is like 45 minutes of everything I filmed. So I, I kind of thought it might be a little easier to try something different. So I'm not doing the same. I'm also drinking my ginger ale. Yeah, like, sneaky religious warning. And, like, again, she doesn't make, she doesn't make, um, she doesn't, it's not blatant throughout the book. Like, it feels, she throws it in there every once in a while because that comes from her perspective. I'm talking about the lazy genius here. She makes it clear that's her perspective, but she also isn't, like, it's not in your face in a way that made me uncomfortable. It felt just like, something that she would mention here and there, if it applies to you, like that felt good. But then the end of the book, it was like a two or three page, just like montage of how the whole reason you should be following the principles in this book is because of your relationship with God. And for those of you who are newer to my channel, I know there are some of you who are newer here. Hi, by the way, I do talk about church a lot. I'm a Unitarian Universalist and you use tend to come from very different faith backgrounds. I consider myself to be a secular humanist you you. So whilst I am, or at least was the moment I'm not because of how bad I'm feeling active in my church, it's not, it is not a Christian situation. Our church actually tends to lean pretty heavily, either humanist, atheist, or pagan. So there's that. Anyway, I can talk more about that in a different video. This is not the time. I need to start working on my bullet journal because I got shit to do. And Emily, I actually have that book you're talking about. Where is it? Because I've been reading my, I've been using my Kindle. Oh my God, I can't open it. Which one? This one. Whoa, where'd it go? House of the Cerulean Sea. I actually have that on my Kindle as well because uh, that was one that was super recommended to me. I am a secular humanist. I mean, I guess I'm a religious humanist because I'm a UU, but I, my, um, my belief in, my belief in a deity is not existent. <laughs> Although the way I see it, 
I'm just not really concerned with that. Like I'm more concerned with the way people treat each other. And if I find out I'm wrong after I die, then I find out I'm wrong. So anyway, so, um, Oh yes, absolutely. Say no to self-help books if you are not feeling the, the urge to it. That's actually kind of why I wanted to read The Lazy Genius in the first place. But now my next several books are going to be fiction books. I am currently, except for the one about sleep that I'm reading, which isn't a self-help book. It's actually a book about sleep. It's not a book about how to be better at sleep. It's a book about, it's a book about how to, like what, how sleep, what sleep is, how sleep works in different animals, how sleep works in humans at different ages, the effects of sleep or lack of sleep. It's a fascinating book about sleep, but it is not a book about like changing your sleep habits. I have another book, excuse me. I have another book I'm going to read for that. But yes, House in the Cerulean Sea is on my list for this month. And, um, House in the Cerulean Sea is on my list for this month. I am in the middle of reading Brave New World for the first time, which I heard was a really kind of messed up book. And I can now confirm as I'm 50% through it, that it is very messed up. And I, then I have the All Souls trilogy, which I am excited to dig into next because that's been recommended to me so many times. So I am highly excited for that one. But I'm trying really hard to front load this year with fiction because I tend in January and February to go deep, deep into the self-help plan. And that does not seem to ever make me feel really good about myself. So, um, so I am definitely leaning towards fiction this first month. And I will pro I'm thinking about for the book club doing quarterly alternating between fiction and nonfiction books and the nonfiction might not be improvement type books, but I'm thinking the first book I want to be a fiction book to remind us all that reading for pleasure can take many forms, especially reading fiction. So maybe it'll be house on the Cerulean Sea. Maybe I'll have that for my book club book. I don't know yet. So anyway, I want to pull out my power sheets because I do want to think about that this week. Although I think I might wait till I draw the weekend. Let me, let me come back to them when, after I've drawn the weekend. So here's what I'm thinking about doing. So this week that I did, um, I felt like I, I kind of like this, but I feel like for a regular week, this is not a big enough task list, but that I feel like this coming up week, I'm going to need more of a task list and just a, like a, this, maybe this amount of size for the daily stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like my task list is going to need to be girthy and my, my weekly days, my appointments are going to be a little less girthy. So the idea that I had, the idea that I had is, um, to, to, uh, I totally brain fart. Sorry guys, kidney fog. What I thought I would do is on this page, do a horizontal sort of situation where the, the, um, the blocks for the days would be a little bit wider than they are at all so that I could either just do one list or do two next to each other lists. So I have the whole week on one page. And then on this page have the task list take up kind of a chunk of it, like kind of like yay. And then on this side down, because I don't, what I discovered from this is that I do not need the entire width of the page. I need about this much, this much of the page width wise when it comes to the task list to have enough room to write without activating my tendonitis. Like that's the joy of having this bigger notebook is that it, I don't need the whole page to make my task list to not have to write super fucking tiny. So what I was thinking about doing was having like the task list kind of go here so that there's room for decoration on top and bottom. And then on the side here have two bricks, one of them for my blood pressure and one of them for meals. And then to put my weather with the days on this side, that's my, that's my, uh, my kind of my theory that I'm going on. And I did some counting, but that's all I did. So I'm going to have to kind of come back in here and figure some shit out. So where's my pencil? Because apparently that's how I'm living my life these days. Marty. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried about eating hella healthy. I'm just worried about making dinner every night because we got into the habit of, uh, of takeout a little too often for my taste. All right. So what I counted was I wanted to do 16 squares, then one in the middle empty, then 16 squares. 
and then from the top all the way down and just leave one bottom square. So I'm going to fill up the whole fucking page with these bricks. And I also burped a little bit. Um, and I saw a question from, where'd it go? How would the, from Aaliyah. Um, how will the book club work? Generally, the way I do the book club is I, in the past, what I have done is I have, uh, sent emails about the book club every week and then had discussion in the Facebook group. I'm still not at a place to open the Facebook group up yet, but the book club wouldn't start till March. So I'm thinking that the discussion might actually work better in discord. So I'm not sure yet. I have some time to figure it out, but I will make all the announcements about the book club in February because that's the way I'm trying to space things out. Denise, that is exactly what happened to us. What started out as supporting small businesses turned into hella takeout. That is like, that is like exactly what happened to us. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, Whoops, wait, 11 is what I want. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then here, so it's 12. And so then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then here's the other one, which would go up here, but actually it would be here. Yeah, so here and then here 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 okay so that would be monday monday and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven all right so monday tuesday wednesday and then we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's kind of how we're going to work this. So each box is going to be 16 by 11. And I think that'll work for me. The Perpetual Disappointment Journal. Holy shit, that sounds hilarious. Let me write that down because that sounds funny. Sorry, I just glanced up and saw that because when I'm counting, I don't see shit except for when I'm counting. I don't know where any of my things are. Have you ever reorganized and then you can't find anything? Yeah, that's me. Perpetual, perpetual. I can't fucking spell today. This is gonna suck my ass. Journal. Okay, can I even read that? No, does it matter? No, I can read it. What do I think about the stand so far? I got some thoughts. I have not seen episode three yet though. And we have been getting, um. When it comes to food, we have been getting every plate because it gives like Jesse's the one who makes it and he makes it with the kids or he make if, if the kids are here because it gives them like a way like has the instructions and everything and it's just perfect for them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And so it should be the here if I counted right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Woo. I did it. Hell yeah to thinking about things ahead of time for once in your goddamn life. <sighs> Alrighty, I have those boxes kind of mapped out. And so this is going to be blank and it'll say like, you know, January, some bullshit. Um... Yeah, no, we, we try uh, every plate, which was the one that was recommended to me by one of my patrons as the, um, the less, the less expensive meal box. It's, it's not very fancy. It's not designed to teach you how to be a phenomenal chef. It's designed to get you like meals to cook on a, like slightly, it's like, I think HelloFresh runs every plate. It's like their less expensive version. And, um... Thus far, uh, thus far, that was scary. What's going on back there? I'm closing the door. Oh, okay. Successful runs of the grocery outlet bargain market. Grocery outlet bargain market. I got cheap rosé and beer. Yay, cheap rosé and beer. All right. Um, now what did I count here? 30. So one, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30. That is not what I want to do. Is that what I want to do? That's what I want to do. I suppose. I don't know. I, don't know. I think it should be in the middle of the page. Should it be in the middle of the page? No, it's not going to be in the middle of the page. Fuck that. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm muttering to myself. All right. Um, yeah, no, Maddie, we don't ever have leftovers either. Like, I mean, I generally do because I can't eat that much. Like, but if Jesse is here, he'll usually eat what I don't finish. And if RJ is here, he definitely eats what I don't finish. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Alrighty. Okay, so this is going to be my task list. Um, but yeah, so the way that we're kind of handling our food is we get the Every Plate box this next week because our custody is all fucked. The kids are... The kids are going to be going back to dad's on Tuesday and then they come back to our house the following Tuesday. So because our every plate delivery is on Friday, I am going to get one meal that Jess and I will eat. That'll just be for the two of us. And then I'll get a second meal that has four servings for him to make with the kids to kind of balance it out because the one that I wanted for us, Kat and RJ probably wouldn't like as much. So it's about it's pork chops of some situation Neither of them are huge fans of pork chops. Okay, how many squares do I have? 22. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Alrighty. Okay. Is that too skinny? Maybe. All right, so then I was going to do 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Damn it. Okay, so you know what? We're going to go this to here and then to here. So that works. Okay. <clears throat> so then what I want is, I'm telling you, I counted this ahead of time, but I didn't actually like really stop and think. So the top one is going to be for blood pressure and I need 14 squares down, 14 squares down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, one, two, three. Four, five, six, I can't count you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That didn't work out right. Okay, so we'll do fifteen. No, we'll do 14, and then we'll do 16. Wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, that's fine. That'll work. We'll do it that way. Jesus. Okay. Um, the Perpetual Disappointment Diary. Okay, sorry. I'm all this fucking counting and I still had to fucking count. Jesus. Yeah, my birthday is the 31st, end of the month. And fun fact, I used to be able to tell when my parents got married because, um, because, you know what? Actually, I'm going to bring each of these up one. There. Then it'll be even. Even Steven. Okay. Now I've got my pencil marks in. Whoops. No, I don't. I've got my pencil marks in. My oh hi marks in. Let's start the outlining. I am really enjoying using this, like, thick-ass graphic liner for my boxes. I did that here, too. I lined them in the thick ass and then just did any of the divisions with skinnier bot with skinnier pens. Fucking love this. This is the Micron Graphic One. And if those of you guys who are commenting on the pencil, this is one of the Tombow 
mono drawing like mechanical pencils it's pricier than just a regular mechanical pencil but it's fucking cute and i bought it in one of my moments of of retail therapy that i i kind of disavowed but not really yeah the counting i do have a grid guide page i just the problem is all of the grids that i was using do not really work with my grid guide page. So it, I don't even know where it is. Where the fuck is my grid guide page? Where'd it go? There it is. I think I need to add some more grids. I think the ones I added are not the only ones I need. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm going to start drawing these suckers in. Let's see if I fuck it up. But yeah, so I am very, you know, as somebody who always swore up and down, I'd never get into reading eBooks. It is like almost disgusting how much I'm enjoying my Kindle right now. So I admit it. I was wrong. I was wrong. I never, Jesse's not even in here. Normally when I say I'm wrong, which is very rare, he is like, can I record that? <laughs> but yes, I am admitting it because there are some of you in this chat who I have said to before that I would never be an ebook reader because I love the feel of books. And I do love the feel of books, but holy crap, holding this thing is so much easier on my tendonitis, especially as somebody who who um, reads a lot of thick ass fantasy books like holding a Wheel of Time book or The Stand by Stephen King in one hand is enough to make my hand want to fall off. So uh, it's just so nice. But um, Ink by Gen G Box Counter Madi, I'm gonna write that down too. Oh, I bought, I got a, buy Gen G box count, fucking not gounter. Sounds like goiter, which is cut close to my goat, my gout. I got a, a pencil board thingy from jet pens and it's very kind of smushy feeling and interesting. And I just like touching it. So it reminds me of like jellies back when I was in, you know, elementary school and middle school in the late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, and like, um, Rebecca, no, it doesn't because it has the, I turn down, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure to adjust the set, settings to make it feel the most like paper that I can because I was worried about that too. And I also wanted to answer a question that I got earlier from, I think it was uh, either, I think it was Natalie, was it Natalie? I can't remember, who asked how I'm liking the stand so far. I've only watched the first two episodes. We still have to watch episode three. Thus far, I find the casting to be outstanding, especially Harold Lauder, uh, Larry Underwood, and uh, Lloyd, Heinried. Lloyd Heinried. I cannot believe that I felt more sorry for Lloyd Heinried in episode two than I did for Larry Underwood. They did a phenomenal job of making Larry look like a douche and Lloyd look like somebody who's kind of crappy, but like also easily, uh, manipulated and ran. And I could watch hours upon hours of, of, um, Alexander Skarsgård as Randall flag. So I have quibbles with the series. I absolutely do. But thus far I am really loving both the casting and the soundtrack. So that's where I'm at at the moment. The casting is just absolutely outstanding. So the time jumping is weird and I'm, I'm getting used to it. And the, uh, I was disappointed in the big change that they made. Oh, fuck my life. God damn it. Okay. Can you tell what I did? Can you see what I did? Let's find out. Can you see now what I did? I have done this so many times in this journal. It's like the direction I'm looking at is the, not the direction that I need to be going. God damn it. Okay, so let's see here. I do have, I also discovered the app uh, where you can download, I have Libby, I got that app and I've already borrowed books from my library. So 
Yes, I have figured that one out. I connected the wrong dots. <laughs> it's like I was I was going for the dots on this side instead of following the dots I was supposed to be following. Mother Fiucker. Okay, straight. There we go. That's what we're talking about. You guys cannot see. My tongue is sticking out right now. It's like when I put on, you know when you put on mascara, if you are somebody who wears mascara, how is it like when you put on mascara or eyeliner or something super close to your eye that you have to have your mouth open while you do it? Like you just cannot help but have your mouth open. Well, it's like when I'm drawing straight lines, I have like my tongue hanging out. <laughs> yeah, no, I am using Libby. Absolutely. I have checked out. Actually, Brave New World is one of the books I checked out. I checked out Brave New World, the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, because I haven't read that yet. Um, I bought the All Souls trilogy because with enough, enough people telling me I was going to love it, I felt kind of safe with buying it. And the Kindle had it. Kindle had it for the, um, the the trio as a pack. And I checked out, excuse me, the Princess Diarist, which is Carrie Fisher's book, and um, the Sleep book I'm reading, which is called Why We Sleep. I checked that one out. Plus, I think I checked out the book by Mary Trump. The Too Much and Never Enough, which is one I've been wanting to read, and I just had not gotten around to it. And I checked out, um, oh, what the fuck was the other one I checked out? I checked, oh, sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. I checked out, fuck, I'm brain farting, you guys. <coughs> I checked out... Uh, oh, Jessica Simpson's book, because I actually heard really good things about that as well. And thus far, I started it. I haven't read it yet, and I think I'm going to put it to the side for a bit. But I really appreciate her like self-deprecating sense of humor. I resonate with that. So here's how my... Here's how my uh, my thought goes on checking books out from the library. This has worked for me in the past when I've checked physical books out from the library, and I'm assuming it's going to be the same when I check out books using the app, like eBooks. I am somebody who like who is a glutton for books, and I um, will go and check out just a massive stack of books. And I will blow through some of them and some of them I won't read at all. And usually if I don't go back to touching them after I've checked them out, if I just ignore them, but there's other ones that I'm super into, I usually take that as a sign that this is not the time for that book for me. And so I'll return it when I return all the books and then I will come back to it. Maybe if I decide I've done that before and then re read a book that I hadn't read the first time around. I tend, if I don't read them within the time that I've checked them out, I probably will not read them in that sit in that like time. Also understand that I am a speed reader. And so I tend to blow through books when I'm on like a reading binge, unless it's a book that is really kind of dense and I have to really pay attention to. Usually I'll speed, especially through fiction, I will speed right through it. But this sleep book I'm reading is really... It's not, it's dry, but not in a bad way. It's just, it's, 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 um, it's a lot of information and I am reading it before bed each night. So I'm just hoping to be done with it before the hold is up. That's one I would renew because I am working my way through it slowly, but surely. But that's not a book that'll help me fix my sleep habits. I have a second book that I actually bought for that because this other one is an interesting one, but not one I feel the need to keep. But this other one is called, um, what is it called? It's called, I think, The Sleep Solution, something like that. The Sleep Solution, Why Your Sleep is Broken and How to Fix It. And since my sleep, I, suffer, I don't know if I've really elaborated on my problems with sleeping before, aside from the fact that I talk about how hard it is for me to sleep because of how big my kidneys are. And, you know, then when you have kidney disease and you pee a lot at night, you wake up a lot to go to the bathroom. But there's other things. I could open a library in my house, Jennifer. You are absolutely right. Have you shown people the bookshelves? They've, I've done videos in there with the bookshelves yeah. in the background. Like I've not like done, I think I've only done like a bookshelf kind of tour to the patrons before. Um, 
Oh, I need my other, my other thin, I forgot to grab my, my fine liners. And at least I remember what drawer they're in. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, I need this one. Two. And then I need no five, I think. Nope. 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 Motherfucker. God damn it, I should have done this ahead of time. Fuck it. I'll figure it out. But I do want it. Okay. Wait, is that it? Nope, but I'll, I'll use it anyway. Okay. That's purple. Why would I do that to myself? Oh my God. That would make me so mad if I accidentally did a big old line of purple in my... Why are purple... Why are there per colorful fine liners in my bucket of non-colorful fine liners? I need, I need to go back and make some choices. Damn it. Why cannot I find the one size I fucking want? <sighs> okay, whatever. This is close enough. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm frustrating myself here. Okay. <sighs> yeah. I did do a tour before. Thank you, Aisha. And yeah, Kara, Kara basically explains what it is like to be a speed reader. It's like your eyes kind of, um, but I tend to, uh, I tend to, I'm also a rereader. I love to go back and read the same books over again. So there is that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to draw in a situation like this. With each one, how many did I count here? One, two, three, four, five. I just sort of guessed one, two, three, four, five for the date. And then next to it's going to go the weather. Because that, that was really, <sighs> it's fine. I'm going to color it in with dark blue so it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Let's not, let's not, let's not be too hasty. Still, I think he's rather tasty. <laughs> oh, it's amazing where your mind goes when you are over caffeinated and sinusy. But yeah, I reread, I reread, um, books that I tend to like I my books that I reread are like my comfort blanket they're like my old friends and actually one thing I kind of want to do this year so I decided that after the overwhelming support of many of you on my 21 and 2021 video that rereads count as I so I'm gonna allow myself no more than 50 than 50 rereads to count towards my 100 books goal so I cannot count more, no, any more than half of my, my, my books this year for my hundred books this year as rereads. However, I have struggled to really enjoy any book besides like, um, like self-help style books as an audio book. And the self-help style books seem to work okay for me as an audio book because, uh, they make me think of like a self-help podcast. So, I, and I kind of listen to those out of the corner of my ear, but when it comes to other books, it's kind of hard for me to follow in audio style. So what I was thinking about doing was for some of my, if I felt like rereading, say the wheel of time again this year, because the show is coming out and those books are one of my ultimate comfort books, those books and, um, and Stephen King, some of his books are my ultimate comfort books. I was thinking that for a reread to try something fresh and new to do the audiobook instead of the physical book, you know, especially because I have heard that the Wheel of Time audiobooks are outstanding. And I have heard that there are multiple Stephen King audiobooks that are the, the narrators are just fantastic. So I've heard great things about the Dark Tower. I have heard that the Misery audiobook is excellent. I have heard that any of the ones Will Patton narrates are excellent. I have heard um, really great things about It, narrated by Stephen Weber, and It is my favorite book of all time, even maybe not counting the one really uncomfortable scene, but if you have not seen, and if you've not read the book and you don't know what scene I'm talking about, don't worry about it. You don't need to know. 
you can be on a need to know basis about that. But, um, <clears throat> cocaine is a hell of a drug. Let's just say, um, but yeah, so I have heard that the books he narrates, the book Stephen King himself narrates are actually not as good as the ones where other people narrate them. So for rereads, I'm thinking for some of them of doing audiobooks this year as to try something new. I've never done that before. I have never listened to an audiobook of a book I have already read, especially one I have read multiple times. And most Stephen King books and the Wheel of Time series are books I have read multiple times, all of them. So... But yeah, Kathy, I'm, I'm glancing at the comments. I tend to miss some of them. I, so I catch comments and sometimes I scroll back, but often it's like, I'm trying to draw and talk and then I'll glance at comments and then I'll come back and talk and draw. And then I'll glance at comments. And I, I'm like a, I'm like, I have like the attention span of like a dog that's like squirrel. So that's why I tend to go super off kilter with fucking everything. Anyhow. Um, so this guy will be my Alistair method. And then this guy is going to be my blood pressure. And then this guy is going to be my, my meal plans. Now, how did I divide this up? I did have a way to divide this up. Classic books. Debbie, I would, you know what? If I could find a audiobook of a tale of two cities that has like a really fabulous narrator because that is literally the only Charles Dickens book I've ever been able to get through. And I fucking love it. That was the book that started my fascination with the French revolution. So if you have any recommendations for classics, I would love to listen to like Shakespeare being narrated or cause I love Shakespeare. I am, I am without a doubt a huge fan of Shakespeare and not because I think he is like the highest form of literature, but because he was fucking, he was the, the goddamn trashy TV of the Elizabethan era. And I am here for it. So yeah. How did I put my emojis in my Google calendar? Are you talking about like, um, are you talking about like from my, um, my like appointments and things like that, how they might have like a little car or something? Uh, well, I don't know what it is on a PC, but when I'm doing it on my computer to pull up the emoji while you're typing in the title of the event, you just pull up your little emoji screen on the Mac. It is control command spacebar. You just do control command spacebar and the little emoji map pop, like the little emoji selector pops up. I don't know what it is on, on a PC though. One. Okay. So I need eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then <sighs> revisit Patrick Stewart reading his sonnets. Heidi, I'm writing that down because that sounds fucking rad. I prefer of Shakespeare. I don't really care for his comedy. His comedy is funny, but like I have to work too hard to like get through the language to find the jokes. And the historical ones I find hilarious because of their uh, propaganda. If you don't know, Shakespeare um, was trying to kiss butt. And the way to kiss butt was to portray like Richard III. The reason he's such a villain in Shakespeare's play is because he was trying to kiss Elizabeth, like the, the Tudor's butt, basically. Um, but... I, I love the tragedies the most. I am a hoe for tragedies. I am a hoe for over the top, ridiculous tragedies. It's why I love like tragic musical theater. My favorite musical theater is the musical theater without a happy ending. I don't like when everything resolves and is fabulous. I like it when things end with everybody's dead, like Les Miserables <laughs> or, or uh, Rent, which not everybody's dead, but you know what I mean. Oh, that's awesome, Rebecca. I knew about the planets in Aquarius, but I didn't even think about that. The book Sweet Bottom Grass explains Shakespeare's jokes and dirty comments. I'm going to write that one down, too. I'm getting all sorts of good information here. Sweet Bottom Grass. That also sounds like the dingleberries live on Sweet Bottom Grass. It's kind of what it sounds like to me. <sighs> 
Yeah, King Lear is one of my favorites of Shakespeare. My favorite plays of Shakespeare. I love King Lear. I love Macbeth. I love Hamlet. I love, I don't love Romeo and Juliet because all I want to do is shake them and say, motherfuckers, go like do TikTok. You know, <laughs> like you're too young for this, assholes. You know? <laughs> okay, what am I doing here? We got four, four, and two. So one, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's not enough. God damn it. I didn't count right. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, you know what? So fuck it. I'm just going to go down the middle. I'm going to go right down the middle here. Yes, I am. Hell yes, I am. And then here. And then I just need to divide into twos. Monday. Whoops. My line Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday that's one and then <sighs> modern interpretation of Romeo and Juliet where it's on YouTube TikTok Facebook Twitter I will say I will say the Boz Lerman Romeo and Juliet is one of my favorite things ever. Fetch me my long sword hoe. And then she hands him a gun that says long sword. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. I think that John Leguizamo as Tibble is just like the greatest casting ever. And I, I just, I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. But I love like the frenetic whackness of Baz Luhrmann's direction. Like Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite movies ever. I love how everything you watch from Baz Luhrmann makes you feel like you might have just tripped on acid before you walked in the door. Like you're not sure, but it's entirely possible. So that's that's my uh, story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I love A Tale of Two Cities, Vicky. It was one of those books that I um, could not, like, I did not like it at the beginning. I could not get through it. And then my mom had one of those illustrated classics. She had a whole bunch of them, and she found the one for me in the box of A Tale of Two Cities. And I got past the boring as fuck first part and realized how much better it gets. And then I was like, fuck yeah. And so now A Tale of Two Cities is forever my favorite. And then when my kids' high school did a tale of two cities, the musical for their school musical. It was like, I sat there next to some friends of ours whose son was also, um, he was there to support it. Cause, uh, he's one of the teachers and his sons were with him and they had never read a tale of two cities. And so I was just explaining things to them like during the, uh, <laughs> during the intermission, because I was like, yeah, I fucking love this book. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's see here. Let's see if maybe using this thing will make will make my pen work less shitty. Let's see here. Let's do Monday. Oh, it does help. Pro tip. The gel pen flows so much smoothly on the squishiness that I got from jet pens. Wow. Fancy things do fancy things. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Monday the 4th, yeah? Yeah. 1, 4. Yes, I know about the history of swear words hosted by Nicolas Cage. I have heard about that from multiple people, and I'm very excited about it because it's all things I enjoy. Nicolas Cage and swear words. And it looks kind of like they're framing it sort of like Masterpiece Theater, which I just think is rad, so... But yes, thank you for everybody reminding me because I didn't realize it was the 5th. I just knew it was coming. So I'll have to make a note of it on the 5th, won't I? Yeah, the squishy thing is from Jet Pens. This is one of their pencil boards. Um, I got the A4 size, which was... I wanted to get one that was slightly bigger than my journal because 
I wanted to have like room for my jankiness because I tend to, if you haven't noticed, be all over the place and having something that I have to keep perfectly lined up seems like a fucking recipe for disaster. Let's just, let's be real here, man. Let's be honest. How is my, bye Eleanor. Um, how is my new office? Dude, I am loving it. I am loving my new office. It is, it is set up differently. It opens up. Cause for those of you who don't know, I have a tiny house. We have an, I mean, it's not tiny. It's a three bedroom, two bathroom house, but it's 1100 square feet. Don't want to know how much you pay for it. We live in Northern California. We live in Napa. Okay. White gel pen. You're starting to, you're starting to give up on me, friend. I'm not going to give up on you. You don't give up on me. I'll never let go, Jack. Um, and I might let go, Jack, if you start fucking up too much, though. Um, this pencil board is only big enough for one of us. Um, what was I going to say? So, uh, my office is technically like the dining area of like my living room. There's like my living room. And then there's like the area where you would put a dining room table. And then my kitchen is next door. Like you can see, I'll put my face on real quick. You can see, that's not what I'm doing. Wait, hold on. Yeah. You can see behind me over here. I don't know how this is working over here. There, that's my kitchen. And then right there's my couch and my TV. And then behind me, which you can't see is Jesse at his computer. So when my computer was in the middle of the room, it kind of made the room feel a lot darker. And it's already kind of a hobbit hole to begin with because we, uh, our house, the way it's set up, the living room it does not have a lot of fright, like light coming into it. So redoing it just makes the room feel bigger. I'm still not quite done yet. And what I told my patrons earlier, and I, I guess I'll tell you guys now, is that my first video after this is actually going to be another live stream on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Because I have realized after the last... Uh, after the last, after dealing with my office and putting everything away, I do not have room for my massive washi tape stash. So I need to cut it down by half, by one half. I have so much washi tape. You have no idea. I have so much washi tape and I need to declutter it by half. So that's going to be a live stream. I'm going to be streaming for at least two hours. I gave myself two hours. Hopefully I can get through it in that amount of time because it'll force me to move fast so I don't get all sentimental. But yeah, I have to declutter my washi tape by half to make everything fit in my office. And that that's like the major standing in the way of my office happiness because I need to get it out of the way. So yeah, one half. You will get an office tour, I promise. It is not happening right now though because I am not quite finished. I need to like finish... A, I need to finish a few spots and B, I need to figure out where everything actually is because <laughs> I can't find fucking anything right now. So I redid everything, but you will get an office tour. I promise it will come. It is just not happening right now I, because A, I don't want to make you all seasick from having to figure out what fucking camera to use and B, I'm in the middle of my bullet journal. Damn it. This is my bullet journal time. All right. So, yeah. When the first live you saw was my wa my washi organization. Yeah, I, I got this, though. But Megan, but this time, Megan, I got to be I got to be ruthless. So. <laughs> oh, my God, Rebecca, that would be hilarious. I'm picturing um, one of our RE people because our RE teachers are husband and wife. So I could imagine one of them showing up naked. That would be funny. My kids would be horrified by that. Okay. You know, I feel like I should get my, I feel like I should get my, my skinnier white gel pen. My, um, this is smaller. There's not enough space. I think I should get my white. Okay. I'm going to pop on my camera for a minute so you can see me walking to that's actually not where I'm going. So you can get a bit of it here. Look at all that. Ooh, la, la. But I need to get my white jelly roll that's skinny. I can figure out where it is. Is it in there? No. Where the fuck are my jelly rolls? Oh, they're in there. Is it this one? 
This one is a 08. That is not skinny. I need the skinny one. This is going to be a hot garbo mess if I'm not careful. Okay, is this a skinny one? Jelly Roll 05. Jelly Roll... No. Jelly Roll... Oh... No. God damn it. Okay, well, 05, I guess, is what it's going to have to be because that's the one I can find. So, put my pens back. But see, you got to see a little bit of it. Just don't look at my junk. Yeah, it's so much more open. I'm very excited. Now I got to turn my computer back and put put my hands on. Okay, jelly roll. Don't hate me. Are you dead? Don't be dead. Don't be dead, man. Jelly Roll, you are not going to make me angry like this, are you? Oh my god. Even the licking trick isn't working. Oh, god damn it, Jelly Roll. Dried out on me. <sighs> okay. Then that was all for naught. <sighs> oh, my white gel pens. I'm going to have to get the skinnier one that, like, works better. Because if I'm going to keep doing this, I'm going to need one that's not so broad. Okay. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, dot, tasks. See, it's just so chunk. And I just did a jet pens order because I needed to get more of the one, these graphic liners, the fatty boom baddie, uh, these ones. No, not that one. Whatever, wherever it is, my fat Pigma Micron. And I also needed to get, um, cat, uh, lost one of a couple of their mild liners and I wasn't going to give them my mild liners. Plus, so I had to order some mild liners. Plus I had to order this. I just, I had to put some, I had to order some stuff from jet pens and I got that order and I could have ordered some skinnier white gel pens if I had given a damn, but I had not. So fuck my life. Is it a new desk? Yes, it is a new desk. Well, it's not, it's sort of. So, you know, I have Ikea shit. My, my house is like like an Ikea, not an Ikea showroom, because those things are always so gorgeous, and my house is decidedly not. That's okay. It's well lived in. But we have lots of Ikea shit in our house because we, you know, are on a budget, like I'm sure many of you are. And my office is very modular. I have a bunch of those Alex drawers, and I have the tabletops, but I got the corner tabletop for my computer so I could have it in the back corner, which is where I'm streaming from now. And, um, and so that's, that's the life I'm living at the moment. Yes, I have, let me get my, I have a, I need to get a skinnier Posca pen because I have like super, all of the Posca pens. Somebody had asked me before why I didn't use white Posca pens in one of my video chats. Um, the reason I have it is because I don't have, um, I do not have, What am I, why am I brain farting? I do not have um, skinny ones. All of my Posca pens are super fat because when I do side jobs where I use paint pens, they're often large scale, like on big chalkboards and things like that. And so the skinny, tiny ones are not ones that I have generally um, invested in. So I can, but I actually think I could probably go to my local art supply store and grab um, a skinny Posca pen. So that's actually something to write down. I was thinking about going out anyway this afternoon um, to the craft store to pick up some things that I need, but I wasn't sure. I don't know. I'm not making dinner tonight. Jesse's making dinner tonight. You stopped buying eggs, Pam? I should stop buying eggs, although Jesse made breakfast for dinner and used up like an entire 18 count of eggs. But, I only used 12 eggs. But there were, they were mostly gone. But I, I kept forgetting I had eggs, and so I kept buying eggs, and we wound up having hella eggs. I think there's still eggs in the garage. I think so, too. 
<sighs> yeah, so maybe I will go pick up um, some finer point Posca pens. All right, so maybe I want to do, do I want to do more fanciness? I think I do. I don't, but I'm going to put some weather in. I need to take a break from, well, actually, no. First, I'm going to grab the pen that I could not find. Motherfucker, I want an 05. This is my own goddamn fault for just throwing all my pens in here like it was nobody's. There's a five. Okay. You were like digging through them like wrist deep. In I know. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm, oh God, this will get me so demonetized. I was going to say I'm fisting my, my fine liner drawer. Okay. I'm going to use my Tombow mono drawing pen in 05 because I found that one. And I'm going to put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then repeat. Okay, so got that done. How was the Energel Klena on Leuchterm paper? It was fine. It just, you know, it's a gel, it's a needlepoint gel pen, so it left like massive ridging on the other side, but it didn't smear or anything. Um, hi from Delaware. <sighs> But yeah, um, your son tries to grow chickens. Does he sit on them, Pam? Because <laughs> that would be really cute. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put my weather in right quick for next week. It's supposed to get really rainy. Like, it's supposed to be, like, stormy this next week. I mean, for Northern California, so as stormy as it gets. But, like, we're supposed to get a storm Monday, and then we're supposed to get a storm Wednesday and potentially Friday. Danielle, that dot is like the dot where I put the dot, like the final, the final countdown. You can't see it here, but like I put the dots down here so that I can cross it off like that. Like that's the dot where I mark when it's, oh, hi, Mark, where it's done or when it's getting migrated. All right. So Monday, a hundred percent rain, a hundred percent. I like how my weather app has started adding like the percentage for rain because sometimes it's like rain, but then we're hella disappointed. And then Tuesday. Hi buddy. Hi. Are you looking for something to eat? Yeah. There's chicken strips in the freezer. Jesse ate the soup last night, I think. So that's gone. Bye, Kathy. <clears throat> Hi, Jane. Hello from Fort Lauderdale. Hi, Victoria. That is so awesome, Pam. I mean, I, I don't know if it'd be good to find like broken egg somewhere in your house, but that is fucking cute. Like that is adorable. Maybe you should get him a dragon's egg, like the ones like they do for Game of Thrones, and see if he could hatch a dragon. <sighs> Johannesburg, South Africa. That's rad. Do I still only fill until two? No, Jessica, I used to. So for those of you who haven't been watching for a long time, I used to put my weather in for half the week, and then midweek I would put the rest of the weather in. But because I don't really leave the house hardly at all anymore, it's mostly for my, like especially now that my desk is right next to the window. So I know if I'm going to be like freezing my balls off, but um, it doesn't need to be quite as accurate. Once we get to a point where the kids are like going back to school on a regular basis, you know, assuming that ever happens again, and uh, we leave the house every day of some sort, then I probably will go back. But right now it's mostly just to think about like, do I want to serve soup on the, I say, if I'm going to make soup this week, I'm going to serve it on the rainy night because that makes more sense and things like that. So it's mostly, mostly for meal planning currently. And then Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday. 
59, 39. All right, there's my weather. Woohoo! Okay. Any school update from Napa? Uh, no. They're, they're still, apparently in California, even when we had to go back to the stay-at-home orders, if a school was already open, they could stay, like, for part-time, they could stay open, um, unless they, uh, I think it was, like, 25% or 5 some a percentage of the people at the school test positive, but, um... We pulled the kids out of in-person and they're going to stay virtual learning this semester because even though virtual learning is really not the business for them, getting sick, like Jesse and I are both sickly ass motherfuckers, so getting COVID is not a good idea for either of us. We are, we are not the people who will survive a zombie apocalypse. You know, he's type 1 diabetic and I've got, you know, PKD and in, in like late stage renal disease. So, we, and like the kids, Kat was like, mom, I don't want to get sick either. So, you know, it just, they recognize that, that, uh, this is just something that has to happen. It does concern me though. Like if I could just yank my kids out of school for the rest of the year and have them try again next year, I would. I just don't know. If, I don't think that's really possible. And I don't think their dad would go along with that. But it's just, it, this year feels really, like, futility seems to be the word that keeps coming to my head when I think about this school year. And it's not for the fault of any of the teachers. Our teachers are trying so hard. It's just the situation, you know? It's one of those, when I talk about, like, parenting being hard during COVID, that is, that is exactly what I am talking about. Am I liking the bigger size notebook? Yes, Rebecca, size does matter. I like them big. I like them big and broad. <laughs> Mom. Yes, baby. Can I wash my clothes right now? Yes. Okay. No. What? Well, how much clothes do you have to wash? Do you have a big load? Uh -huh. Divide it in half, please. When you wash your whole load at once, the whole washer is going to start jumping up and down, and then we're going to hear it on the stream. And it's like, boom, boom, boom. And I just don't want that. So divide your load in half, please. Okay. And please don't overload it with... Uh, yes, Mom. Don't put too much detergent in. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I agree, Debbie. I think everybody... If we could get a do-over year, like, you'd just be like, can we please... If you don't want a do-over year, then that's fine. But, like... Some of us might just be like, can our kids just get a do-over, please? I don't want to do this year over. I don't want to do this year over again, but like... Be careful what you ask for. That sounds like a monkey's paw wish waiting to happen. Good point. <sighs> yeah. you like, some time to catch up. <laughs> it's like, fuck my life. What did I ask for? Okay. Let's add a blob you over here. And yes, I am continually interrupted. Again, if this is one of your first times on my live streams, I don't hide my family away on my live streams. So you get you get a real look at like the goings on in our household. And whether that is good or not, I, I don't know. That just depends on your point of view, I guess. But yeah. Cat, though, is in hiding. Well, actually, are all the cats in hiding? Is Loki in your lap, Jess? No, he's in the cat bed on the couch. His new favorite home. His new favorite home. And, Lu and Lucy's in the tree. I assume. And Cat, the biggest cat, is in their bedroom doing who knows what. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't ask questions about my teenagers. <laughs> oh, yes. Talking about the room. That's where Oh Hi Mark comes from. Yes. Um, oh Hi Mark comes from the room. If you've never seen it, it is this really terrible movie. And the main character, who's also played by the director, Tommy Wiseau, he has his friend Mark. And whenever he sees him, he's like, Oh Hi Mark. So that's where the Oh Hi Mark came from. So we're going to call this week one, January.
Did you find something to eat, buddy? No. No? I found the bread, though. That's food, but you should eat something besides that. That's why I said no. We'll have some of the oranges that are in there. There's also raspberries in the fridge. Have cereal. Yeah, but you need to have some fruit, too, please. Okay. Thank you. Week one. There we go. Cool. <sighs> okay. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? That was loud. I'm sorry. I just yelled right into the microphone. <laughs> Fuck. Guys, I'm, I'm, I, I'm caffeinated, but also exhausted. So somebody asked about how my health is doing over my break. It was really nice. I relaxed. I still feel like shit. Like physically, I still feel like shit. Mentally, I feel really good. So yay? Question mark? Um, January week one. How old are my kids? Uh, RJ, who you just heard back there, is 14. He'll be 15 in March. Oh, hi, March. <laughs> and uh, Kat, my oldest, just turned 17 and is hiding out in their room like any 17-year-old does on a Sunday. So, yeah. Have fruit, RJ, no scurvy. Fun fact, my mother used to threaten us with scurvy if we didn't eat our fruit when we were growing up. She told us we would get scurvy if we didn't eat fruit, and we would get rickets if we didn't eat, um, if we didn't eat uh, vegetables. And I was paranoid. I was a paranoid ass little kid. I was one of those neurotic children who like was afraid of everything. I used to, when I was, um, I'm the oldest and my baby sister would often come into my room cause she and my other sister shared a bed. But my other sister was like, fuck you dolphin. If my sister tried to sleep with her when she was scared. So my baby sister would come into my bedroom to get into bed with me when she was scared. And I would be totally fine with her getting into bed with me on the condition that she slept on. I, my bed was up against the wall and I would get to sleep next to the wall. And my baby sister got to sleep on the edge of the bed because if somebody came into our room in the middle of the night to murder us, she'd get murdered first. So, and actually that's how Jesse and I have always slept except for re ever since I got my fistula because I can't lay on that arm anymore. And so now I'm going to get murdered because of kidney disease, which is just some bullshit. It's just another thing to hate my kidney disease for. Can't get murdered first? I guess. Yeah. You guys, your bedrooms are on the street. So you guys are fucked. It yeah. depends on how they break into the house. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're all carrying our thoughts. <laughs> Recommendations for brush pens for beginners. Um, I really love the Tombow Fudanasuki pens. They're the small brush pens for beginners. They're the hard ones. <laughs> the hard ones especially are much easier, I have found, to control than a lot of other brush pens I have tried. I also love Tom my I'm heavy-handed, and so Tombow dual brush pens, the ones I'm using right now, are also a solid choice if you're heavy handed like I am because it has a nice big brush, but still, still a certain level of firmness. What I would avoid as somebody who is both heavy handed and somebody who still struggles with brush lettering from time to time, what I would avoid, like these pit artist pens, not the pens for a beginner because they're a lot floppier. They're like a little harder to control. You want a pen that whose nib is firmer at the beginning. Now, I could be wrong. I'm not an expert at brush lettering, but to me, a firmer nib is just easier to learn with. You could also learn really well the technique of brush lettering with a Crayola marker, a super tip, or just a standard, one of the big broad ones, because they, um, you can create the same motion with one of those pens and train your hand to do the correct thing while without spending a lot of money. So you'll be able to kind of get the hang of it before you enter into the world of actual brush pens. Pentel sign pens are also really good. Aliyah's right. Yeah. I tend to find that those tend to hop, like flop for me just a little bit on like curves that go in this direction a little bit more than the food day ones do. Um, what is going on? Your husband's in quarantine this whole week. I am sorry. That's a bummer. 
And then we had somebody else. No, when I saw EJ, when I saw on Shit's Creek that they were talking, when he was like, you get murdered first. No, you get murdered first. I was like, that was me and my sister, except they didn't fight about it. Your nephew tested positive. I am so sorry, Natalie. Are Tombow brush pens expensive or no? Ah, uh, they're not, you're not going to find a super cheap, cheap brush pen. I mean, you can, there are some that are pretty inexpensive off of like Amazon. You can get, um, like the Uhuhu, Uhuhu pens or whatever off of Amazon for pretty cheap. But the Tombow pens are nowhere near as expensive as some of the other choices, but they they can still get pricey, especially if you use them on like janky paper and the tips start to fray faster. Okay. This seems like a lot of lines to highlight, Cindy. You are making choices. You're making choices that you may regret later, but we're just going to go with it. I think I might not do the darker blue here. I think I might just leave the light blue because I'm lazy. And the lighter and the other blue is the pit pen and those are smaller nib. And so I have to be a little bit more careful with doing these narrow lines. Sounds like I'm doing the drugs. I'm not doing the drugs. Hugs, not drugs. What, baby? Remember smoking drugs. Smoking drugs. <laughs> the Artist Loft Dual Tip Brush Pens are a cheap roll alternative. Good to know, John. I haven't tried those ones yet, but those are the ones from Michael's. And yeah, My Michael's does have Tombos on sale. You want to watch to get them when they're like... Uh, uh, what is it? 50% off or 40% off. You can get them. I think they're 20 bucks for a pack of 10, but if you get them when they're 40% off, you can get them from like 12 bucks and that's a really great price. So keep your eye open. Oh my goodness, Chris. Thank you so much for the super chat. That's amazing. And you're welcome for the honesty. And I promise I won't stop being honest. I can't promise to always be entertaining, but that's not up to me. That's up to you guys to think that I'm entertaining. Okay. So we have the, we have all the things in, yeah, we have the things in blood work, meal plan, task list, and then the weekly. And then this is like a de decoration situation, but we're not going to decorate that yet. How long have I been streaming? Oh, for quite a while. Good to know. Um, I'm going to put in my appointments for the week. I don't have a ton, but there are a few things that I need to, I need to, uh, do on specific days. So I'm going to put those in and then my task list, I'll move some things. That's when we're going to look at my power sheets as well. So let me get my appointments in first. The fuck? There it is. Okay. Found my pen. Holy free holies. I have not tried the People have told me to try the pen plus gear knockoffs of Tombos from Walmart. I just haven't yet. You should be able to order from, from Walmart. And no, Jessica, I haven't, but I'll have to look for those. Friction. I just colored all over this situation. Friction. Right. Wally World. The Walmart here in town scares me because I swear to God, it's like you go in there and it's like, it's like COVID's not even happening except that they have less cashiers open. Except at Walmart, I've always noticed that like they have 800 checkout stands and at any given time there's like three of them open and like 800 people in line so but I, I don't tend to go there I tend to go to Target because Target is like right around the corner from my house and I like to feel like I'm all like socially correct because I'm not going to Walmart but like a sometimes I do go to Walmart and b any of those bigger stores tend to like have ethical things and you can't I just I'm just being full of myself so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not going to hate myself too much for anything. Content. So my patrons get their peek, their sneaky peeky on Monday. And then I have to go do my blood work. And I want to go, I'm going to put 830. Even though technically I don't have an appointment, but that's when they open. And I just want to go and get it fucking done. So that's, that's, that's about that.
well, we do have to wear masks. People do wear masks. Not all of them, but people do wear masks. It's just, aside from the masks, it's like packed in like sardines. Oh, I got to tell you guys about the Whole Foods experience Kat and I had on New Year's Eve. Oh, my God. Okay, so wait, hold on. Let me make sure I write this down. So, um... Tuesday, I'm doing the, the washi tape live stream where I go through half of my washi tape and get rid of it. And RJ, do you think I'll be able to do that? No. Why not? You have too much. You don't think I'll be able to get rid of it because I have too much? Or because I'm not going to be able to part with it? You have so much that you won't be able to get rid of all of it. I'm not going to get rid of all of it. I have to get rid of half of it. That's what I mean. You want to be able to get rid of half. Okay, um, so I went, and don't forget Nicolas Cage on Tuesday. You're right. Nicolas Cage, Netflix. Okay, um, so Kat and I went to Whole Foods on New Year's Eve because I, we got, okay, so we, this takes context. Okay, so I, on Kat's birthday, which I know, Jessica, you asked how Kat's birthday was. Kat's birthday was great. We got sushi from our favorite sushi place. It's up Valley. I drove up, like they've come down here and delivered, but we usually get like tempura fried rolls from there. That's why it's our favorite place because they've got like really decadent deliciousness. And it's always kind of cold when they've delivered it because they have to come 45 minutes down Valley and do all of their deliveries on one day. So I decided to drive up there and get it, take out and then bring it back home. And it was really good. However, I forgot, I was so concerned with getting the order right that I forgot um, a order of nigiri that Kat wanted. Kat wanted tuna nigiri and I got everything else. And so I promised Kat that they could have whole food sushi because it's like the only decent, like go into a store and buy sushi, like off the, sh like off the shelf. Whole foods is the only place that does it where it's actually good, at least in our opinion. And so, um, we went into whole foods to get the, uh, to get the sushi. And I also had to pick up a handful of other things that I needed for, um, for dinner that night and for the next few days. Like I figured while I was there, I would grab these things. And I, what I wanted to do was do either delivery or pickup, like curbside pickup, because then I wouldn't have to go in, but they weren't offering it on New Year's Eve. And we found out why when we got there, right? So we went into, we went into Whole Foods and it looked like they were monitoring the doors, you know, because in California, we're under like the stay at home alert where stores are only allowed to have X number. I have a patron live stream on Thursday. Stores are only allowed to have X number of like percentage of people in their, um, in their, God, I can't even fucking think. A number of people in their store at any given time like of your capacity you're only allowed like so much percent i don't know what it is right so i thought that that's what they were monitoring for and i have never seen whole foods have to monitor before because it's a really big store and there's generally not that many people in there like trader joe's is next door they usually have to monitor and target usually has to monitor but i've never seen whole foods do it before so i was like huh a lot of people but no they were monitoring they were monitoring how many shopping carts they had because they only had they had no shopping carts up front and the person who checked the parking lot for shopping carts only had four which means as somebody who's worked in grocery stores for 20 years i know exactly what that means that means they're all in the fucking store with people who are shopping with them so we get in there and the place is packed and they only have two cash registers open. So the line that feeds to the cash registers is like wrapping around the store. There's a line at the meat counter that's wrapping around the store and Kat doesn't have their glasses on, goes to get the sushi. I run to get my other things. I'm like, we just got to get these things and get out of here. Right. And Jesse wanted beer. So I got him beer. We go get in line for the, where the express lane used to be, but they changed it to self-checkout. And I forgot until we got to the self-checkout that you can't ring alcohol up at the self-checkout. So we decided to go back to try and get in the line, but there were so many people in line and they weren't social distancing because there was nowhere to social distance. And Kat had lost me at one point and didn't have their glasses on. So everything was blurry and they were freaking out because they couldn't find me. And I was wearing leggings and like one of those running hoodies and fucking fake Uggs. 
so I looked like every other asshole shopping in Whole Foods. And so Kat couldn't find me and was like freaking out. Finally found me. We get back in line. This time I was like, sorry, Jesse, no beer for you. And like got back in line at the self checkout. And then this guy comes up to us and is like, dude, dude, can I use cash at the self checkout? That line is so long. And Kat saw that he had liquor in his cart. And Kat was like, you know, you can't bring up self checkout alcohol. It was just, it was a hot mess. And we got home and it's like we both wanted to shower. It was so bad. It was so bad. Like, it would have been, it would have been bad not during COVID-19. During COVID-19, it was just heinous. Oh my God. Sorry. So yeah. Anyway, so Patreon Live, I have to get the post up for that. And then afterwards, I need to post the uh, post PNGs because I am doing what has become an annual tradition on my Patreon and that the first live stream of the year, I letter the words of the year of the patrons so that they can use it for personal use. I'm probably going to have to do two live streams because last year it took a long time and I would rather break it up into two to save my tendonitis. So yeah. So patrons, if you're wondering when that stream is going to happen, it's going to start this coming up Thursday and then it'll probably be the next week as well. But yeah, we'll be doing words of the year this week. So yeah, like, and like I said, I have worked in grocery stores. I know what it's like when it's busy, but it felt like, dude, aren't you supposed to be, um, oh, I forgot Monday. I have to remember my imperfect foods order is Monday. And then that means Thursday I will be prepping produce and then grocery list. Cause then Friday morning I want to order groceries so that they can get delivered so that I don't have to live that fucking lifestyle. Normally I order groceries from Target. Sometimes in Napa, there's only, I think, four stores that do grocery delivery. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Lady True North. You're a wife of a kidney transplantee. That is, you know, transplant patients hold a special place in my heart. And so do the people who love them. <laughs> so thank you. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, I tend to, uh, I tend to order from Target and then either order from Safeway or from Whole Foods if it's something that I couldn't get from Target. Um, but I wish Trader Joe's did delivery, but I, as somebody who worked there for 12 years, I cannot imagine how they would try like Trader Joe's has the most Mickey Mouse horse shit like back end you can ever believe like they're like 800 years behind kind of like yeah like they they are so far behind when it comes to like inventory management and things like that when it comes to like systems so um so I don't imagine there's ever a moment where they will um where they will have that shit together so <laughs> Don't, don't hold your breath for Trader Joe's joining up with like Shipped or one of those companies. And then patron hangout on Sunday. And my, my regular. So then, you know, I do these live streams. My current plan is to continue to do these live plan with me's every week. My monthly setups will not be live because I just cannot, you can see how hard it is for me to focus when I'm doing this shit, like I couldn't do that for a monthly setup. So those will continue to be a regular video, but the live weekly setups are going to continue for the foreseeable future. Fuckery plan with me's will probably not happen in this. I might use the Moxie life for that because I just, if I'm only using one planner as my main planner, that is too much to ask of me, but I really, I have a fuckery plan with me idea that I plan to do probably next month. So we'll see how that goes. And then I'm thinking that I have the Highlighter Thunderdome scheduled for fe uh, dis bleh, what month? Not February. February, I think, is what I have it get, is scheduled for. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think the Highlighter Thunderdome is scheduled for February. February 11th is where it is right now. Anyway. Ooh, from Okinawa. Anyway, um... So here's my power sheets for January. As you can see, I have made some progress on some of these, but I haven't checked anything off here because I'm, like I said, this is going to count as week one, although I have been checking off here. So this week, there's a lot of stuff I want to get done. 
and getting the um not getting the shop open but doing a bunch of the back end stuff to get it open is on my list for this week as well as wrapping up the quarterly analytics a lot of these work related things i'd like to get really dug into this week and i actually have some of those on my task list like i've got some things just brainstormed that i'll get written into here later i just want to let you know i am working on these things and i'm feeling pretty good about it so far with my power sheets so that is happening so i think the last thing that i want to do because i don't have a meal plan for this next week yet except that i know that i know some meals that are coming but i need to really figure out what i'm doing tomorrow night i have no idea what i'm doing tomorrow night Ooh, you got a unicorn jennifer not a planner found me by mistake but you're staying good to know yeah, see, we uh, I, I I pay the monthly the yearly fee for shipped because I started doing that before COVID nineteen happened because I can't lift a lot of the stuff. I have to bring somebody with me to the grocery store, and it doesn't always work out that way. So I started paying it to have somebody bring the groceries here because I'm the one who tends to keep everything stocked up, and I like it that way. It's a, it makes me feel like I have a sense of control in a world that's out of control. So. Um, we need to put something up here. What are we going to put up here? What are we going to put up here? We need to put something besides decoration up here. A quote? Something? What should I put here? Ooh, from Brazil. Hi. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I have been using grocery delivery for a while now. Pure, not even because of COVID, but because, like I said, it's hard for me to shop. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Kaku Koto. And Jennifer Campbell, you guys are all awesome. Getting your, you guys are getting stickers. Okay, um, you're also Brazilian. Hell yeah. All right. So what the fuck? What? What am I gonna put here? There was something. There was something I was thinking. A quote. Hmm. The people, uh, Vicky, those are super chats. They are, some of them, if you see the little like sticker dancing, it's because they're getting, you can get like little fancy stickers to throw into the chat if you pay money, I think. I don't know how it works. And the rest of them are just giving, like throwing money at me like tips. So I appreciate that. Makes me feel like the world's most obnoxious stripper. So, um, podcast this week, not this week, Jessica, I am probably not going to be back on the podcast for a couple of weeks and i need to that's another thing i need to spend some time really thinking about i'm just not i'm not thrilled with where the podcast is right now so i kind of want to really think about it and i have other thinking i have to do first do i have my top three? Oh, that's a good point i should do a top three like maybe right here because my top, I do have a top three for the week. Uh, how do I want to do this? I'm not going to count. I'm just going to draw. Not going to count. Just going to draw. Somehow it goes better than when I count. <laughs> So my top three for the week are to do my 2020 analytics, to get all of my shop inventory, the new inventory that has been sort of sitting to the side, managed, like all my inventory put away. And then my other top three for the week is to, get the uh, videos. Well, no, I think it's probably to get the business structure. Start. No, fuck. Huh, I thought I had three. Okay, so wait. Okay. I'm gonna add a tree, happy little tree, just like Bob Ross, my fucking hero.
Okay, so I'm telling you guys right now, these color working with these color palettes has been really, what's the word I'm looking for? Refreshing. It has been very refreshing to work with these color palettes, the ones for January and the ones for the like all the main year spreads. These guys, these color palettes have been really nice to work with because it's like it takes it takes a certain level of decision making out of the process. Like it's you know, if I want to add decoration to a page, then I add the same decoration I've been doing, but I can do it in like different ways. I can still be creative with it, but I'm not having to like, I remember, oh, was it Amy Tangerine? And one of the times I was watching her or like she was on stage or something where she was talking about, um, one of the best ways to reignite your creativity is to limit your supplies because sometimes having too many things to choose from causes like analysis paralysis. So I have just really appreciated that. Oh, I missed another super chat. Jana, that keep it up. Is that an avocado or is that a pear? <laughs> okay, so definitely my 2020 analytics are on my list of things to get done this week because a lot of the other decisions I need to make need to come from that. And then shop. Hi, Loki. shop inventory and then what's the other thing you almost ate shit and fell off of the couch really <laughs> you know what you know what's on my top priority my fucking top priority is to declutter half of my washi tape let's just let's let's throw it down let's throw the fucking gauntlet get rid of one half washi tape just that's what I'm saying. Like when I declutter it, it's going to be a question of like, which rolls do I want to keep because I want them? But then which rolls have I had for 3000 years and they just don't stick anymore. Or when you try to peel them, the washi tape starts to like break off and like turn into skinny little bits and little fuckeries. Like that's happened to me when I pulled rolls out before to use them. So like, I can guarantee you some of that shit I just bought and have hung onto for so long that it's useless. So like, this is long in the coming long time coming and i've basically stopped buying washi tape i've even stopped getting the simply gilded kit because not that i don't love it i just don't need any more shit i have so much shit i mean i've been making fun of your washi tape for years so cat i love you <laughs> top three so oh hey a different person named cat just cat just gave me a super chap 10 bucks thank you just cat you're my favorite cat right now. No, I'm just kidding. You're my favorite cat. I promise, don't yell at me. Are you gonna cry? No. Did I make you cry? Oh no, I'm a terrible mom. Okay, so. That was the baseline, then you would've been a terrible mom a long time ago. Am I having a washi tape giveaway suit? Probably, because I'm probably gonna have to give away some of it and throw away some of it. Like some of it's probably useless at this point and other stuff is just gonna be stuff I have to get rid of. Maybe like one part giving it to me, one part giving it to the trash and one part- Giving, giving it to one else. of you guys. So yeah, so it's gonna be like all sorts of the situations. So if I have to make any other notes, I can just make them up here, but I'm gonna add a couple of trees for shizzle. Let me see here. You got the scented washi tape at Michael's last year. I was so weirded out by that. I did not get that. Like I saw it, but I just, I don't know. The thought of my washi tape smelling like, you know, cinnamon or toothpaste or something. Like I it just didn't, I, I could not figure it out i could not make it compute in my head so i just didn't i did not but um i know what i like and what i like the reason i've always justified my gigantic washi tape collection and i don't i'm not decluttering it because i think i have too much i'm decluttering it because i don't have enough room for it so i guess that technically means i have too much but the point i'm making is that like the reason that i am i 
Like I've always liked having a big collection because I love to color coordinate. I love having spreads that like match, matchy matchy. And what I like is to have like really color coordinate. But I also know that there are certain kinds of colors I tend to gravitate more often to. And that when I do go out of my comfort zone, I tend to go to the same. It's like, it sure, it might be my comfort zone, but like I tend to, I tend to, uh, I tend to get the same, like I, when I go like for a yellow spread, like if I'm going to do yellow, I'll often do yellow and gray or yellow and purple because I know that I like the look of those, even though I don't tend to like yellow for my stuff. So like things like that. It's, it's like the out of comfort zone, comfort zone. My favorite, what's your favorite bullet journal? Yes. Kimberly has it right. My favorite favorite has been the scribbles that matter when they had the hundred GSM paper. So if they come out with paper that's similar to that again, I will love it. I'm loving this Archer, this Archer, no, this is a Baron Fig, and I'm loving it because um, I like the size of it and I like the paper. But yeah, ultimately, I did use Archer and Olive for a while, and I appreciate it, but it is not the kind of paper I like to use. I just don't paint, so it's not really something that like matters to me i feel like something else needs to go up here but i don't know what so maybe i'll leave it blank and add to it during the rest of the week but um but yeah i don't like the super thick paper because i don't paint in my journal and to me it's wasted i like my these pages feel like i've used them you know what i mean i can feel like i've used them um Bye, Stephanie. Am I going to do a sticker week, Jessica? Maybe not right now. I don't know when, but right now, for like, if I was going to do a sticker week in January, I would pick stickers that match these colors. So that could be interesting. At the moment, I'm not doing it, though. Like, right now, I'm still fine with the pens. But anyway, this is where I'm going to end it, you guys, because this has been a nice long video, and I have really enjoyed setting this up. You will get to see the whole thing filled out next week. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe and like this if you haven't been here before. And... Don't forget that Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, I will be on for a couple of hours trying to declutter half of my washi tape collection. It's a lot. Ooh, birds in flight. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, it's perfect. Birds in flight. Oh my God. Thank you. But yeah, 3 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesday for uh the washi tape decluttering and then next sunday same bat time same bat channel 2 30 p.m pacific time to set up week two in my bullet journal until next time friends i hope you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your week i hope to see you on tuesday and if not on sunday and until next time peace out i'm gonna keep singing until i find my stream there it is bye